have always loved this gospel passage, but it never touched me more deeply than it did in Advent 2002, when I was expecting my second child, a son. I am also the mother of two daughters, but they were both born in the autumn, so it was only that once that I was pregnant during the Advent season. When I read the visitation story that year, I found myself incredibly moved by the moment when Mary and Elizabeth greet each other, an encounter that has been captured so often in art and never more beautifully than in the sculpture by Father Anthony Lauk, CSC, which stands next to the Notre Dame bookstore. Ever since that advent, I always pause to admire that sculpture and to marvel at the way the two pregnant women cling to each other. Think of what they must have meant to each other in that moment. As a young girl, pregnant for the first time, Mary must have been puzzled by the changes in her body and frightened of what lay ahead on the path she had agreed to follow. No wonder she made such haste to Judea. How happy she would have been to turn to her older, wiser cousin, a person she trusted, a person who had very likely already offered her guidance in the mysteries of womanhood. What a relief it must have been to Mary to throw her arms around her cousin, to feel the roundness of Elizabeth's belly next to her own, which would have only just begun to swell with the tiny body of God's son. I picture Mary's anxiety melting away so that when she emerges from that embrace, reassured and comforted, her very first thought is to give glory to God. But the joy of that greeting was not Mary's alone. Like Elizabeth, I was in my sixth month that Advent season 10 years ago. When I remember how tired I was then, I can only imagine how exhausted Elizabeth would have been, pregnant as she was at such an advanced age. What a joy it would have been for her to welcome into her household her young cousin Mary, more radiant than ever and positively brimming with youth and vigor. As Elizabeth's baby leapt in her womb, I imagine she felt more energetic than she had in months. And as she held out her arms to the cousin who needed her, she would have been both humbled and honored by the chance to offer Mary hospitality. Imagine what it must have been like for Elizabeth to know that she was providing solace to the person who in a few short months would be the means of providing solace to the entire world. Now, I certainly don't think you have to have experienced a pregnancy to identify with the joy of the visitation. Who among us has not, like Mary, been reassured by an exchange with a person we know to be much wiser than we are? Who has not been encouraged by a meeting with a person who is just a bit further ahead on the path we ourselves are traveling, by the mentor who is physically, professionally, or spiritually where we long to be? And too, we can all identify with Elizabeth when we find that the idealism of a young friend has left us less jaded, or when we care for a child who depends on us so completely now, but who we hope will eventually eclipse us in knowledge and in wisdom. Or when we teach a student whose intelligence and talents, we suspect, will one day leave us far behind. So for me, in this gift-giving season, the message of the visitation has to do with being grateful for the gifts we are to each other in brief encounters and in more extended ones. My prayer this Advent is that we reflect more deeply on these encounters so that we, like Mary, might emerge from them prepared to sing our own songs of glory to God.